Hi everybody, Claire here from Rainbow Acrylics. I've been asked recently um, if I can make a video showing how I actually mix my paints. So um, my plan today is to do a commissioned Dutch pour pour piece um, and a ring pour, a rainbow ring pour. So I'm going to show you exactly how I actually mix all the paints. Um, so I'm going to get started mixing the white. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So for the Dutch pour, um, it's going to be quite a large canvas, a 50 by 60 centimetres, so I'm going to make up a pint cup worth of white um, paint for the base. You need some scales, so I'm going to put my cup onto the scales. I'm going to turn it on. For Dutch pours, I use Floetrol. Um, now, I'm in the UK and I bought this from Amazon UK in the UK, and it seems to be quite thick. So I've got my own recipe. So I'm going to use two parts Floetrol to one part paint and then between one and a half to two parts water. So first thing I'm going to do is just put, I put it to zero so I'm going to pour some Floetrol in here. So it's going to be roughly two parts Floetrol to one part paint. So let's see, so that's 140, um, 160, let's go for 200, nice round numbers. 200 grams of Floetrol. For my Dutch pours, I like using Amsterdam. I just find I get more cells, I get more really beautiful patterns with the Amsterdam white paint. So I'm gonna put in now um, 100 grams of white. So then the scales will just go up to 300. exactly. Great, so you need a stir stick. So I'm just going to give that a really good stir. I always put my pouring medium in first. I think if you don't, your paint can stick to the edge of the cup a bit more. So with Dutch pours, you need it to be quite a nice, thin, runny consistency. So as it is at the moment, that's actually pretty good consistency for other techniques such as flip cups but I want runny so you can see at the moment it might be quite difficult to see it pouring off nicely but it is quite thick so let's put some water in um, it's a really good idea just to put the water in slowly little bit by little bit because it just incorporates better that way um, so I'm going to go up to 200 grams of water. So I'm just going to zero my scales. I'm just going to start off with just, just a little bit. So I put in 40. So I'm just going to give that a good mix in. It's a good idea to do this in advance of your of painting, of pouring, because you'll get quite a lot of air bubbles in your paint when you're mixing it like this more if you put it into a bottle and shake it so I know we've got 40 in there so let's add a bit more so now we've got 84 getting nicer and runnier. Hundred and seventeen. When you first put the water in and you start stirring it feels incredibly runny, but then actually as you mix it with the paint you can feel it thicken slightly. Now, one mistake I might have made here is that I might not have actually used a big enough cup or I've just put too much of each of the three ingredients in. So I'm just going to take this to 150. So that means I will have done two parts Floetrol, one part paint and one and a half parts water. 
150. You can always add more water in. So go for less to start with. So I think I'll mix all my paints with that ratio, two to one to one and a half, and then have a look at them because each paint, each brand of paint and each color of paint will have a different thickness to it. So you want to, with a Dutch pour, you want to get the paints to be all be exactly the same or near enough the same consistency so that they, they will all blow out together. So let me try and show you this. Nice and runny. So when I when it goes into the cup, if there's no mound, it just pours straight underneath the surface of the paint. And if you do a, a drizzle, that it doesn't really leave a trace. It's probably quite difficult to see with this white. Right, I'm next going to show you how I mix my paints um, if they're of a thicker consistency, so for a ring pour or a, or a flip cup. The big difference is I don't use the Floatrol for these pours. Um, I use my own homemade pouring medium, which is in this bottle. Um, this is two parts PVA glue and one part water. Really, really simple. Um, so I would get my scales, put my bottle on the scales and zero it, and then pour in PVA glue. Um, so what I would tend to do, because it's quite a big bottle this, is I tend to put 900 grams of PVA glue and then I put 450 grams of water. But whatever whatever you have, a ratio of two to one, two parts PVA glue, one part water, and then put the lid on and just give it a really good shake. Try to do that at least the day before you actually want to use your paint, do your painting. Um, many times I've done it just before the painting and it's just full of air bubbles. So that's what's in this bottle. That is two thirds PVA glue, one third water shaken up. Um, right, so I'm going to do a rainbow pour. So I've got lots of lovely bright colours here. So I'm going to use um, these little plastic cups to mix my paint. So I put the, the cup on the scales, um, turn, turn it on so it says zero. I'm going to put the, the pouring medium in first. Um, what you want to try and do is for a painting is work out how much paint you need. So I'm going to be doing a 40 by 40 centimetre canvas. So my plan is to fill um, a half pint cup. So I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colours. So I guess I'm going to make these sort of two thirds full, a half full, two thirds full. So let's put some pouring medium in. So pouring medium to paint ratio now is different. Um, so this is going to be um, between one to one and um, two to one. So um, let's let's go for two to one. So I'm going to put two parts pouring medium in. Now this is runnier than Floatrol. So let's go for, I'm going to say 60 grams of this. And I make up too much, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than not enough. So 60 grams of my PVA pouring medium. So two to one ratio, and then we'll, we'll give it a stir and see what it's like. So the difference here is I'm not going to be adding extra water unless I need to just to get the consistency the same as the other paints. So two to one, so 60 grams of pouring medium, that means 30 grams of paint. So it's going to go up to, the scales will go up to 90 grams. That's it, 91, that's fine. A gram here or there really doesn't matter. A lot of people don't even use um, scales to measure out, they just do it by feel. But I think, certainly I've always used scales, just when I've just started out, it's, it's good to have a formula, have a measurement in mind when you're doing it. Because people say they just go by feel, but you don't know what that feel is like when you're st first starting. Right, now that's far too runny for a flip cup or for a ring pour. Can you see it just it pours very easily off the off the stick. Let me try and get this. And can if I make a trail, I just don't know if you can see this or not. It just sinks straight away. You don't want it to sink. So I'm going to stick to my um, original plan which is a one to one ratio. 
So I'm going to put in another 30 grams of paint. So I'll have in total 60 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of paint. But again, oh, no, that's a bit too much. Again, um, the paints, because they're different consistencies to start with different brands and different colours, it's it you it's all it varies from paint to paint so if you said a, a rough as a rough idea a one-to-one -one ratio half pouring medium half paint do that to start with and then you can either thicken them up by adding more paint or you can thin them down by adding more water right that's much much better so if i do this now can you see it just makes a little ribbon it just sits on top of itself if it makes a little mound as it goes in it still pours off nicely so when this is pouring out the cup for the straight pour, it will still pour really nicely. But it just it just sits on top, it sits slightly proud on there. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So this particular paint is Artina, um, and I think they are quite runny paints. Let's try one with um, a totally different brand. Um, let's try my Essentials um, Royal and Langnickel Cadmium Red. So I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna have too much paint here, but doesn't matter, I can, use, I can just use leftovers for another pour. So again, 60 grams of pouring medium. In fact, no, I'm just gonna go for 50, because I'm gonna get far too, no, no, I'll go for 60. grams of pouring medium and then another 60 grams of paint so the scales will say 120 and then we'll give it a good mix and see what that consistency is like You want to just keep mixing it so that it's all one uniform colour. Um, if you can still see white streaks, that's still the pouring medium. So you need to just keep, keep mixing until it's all smooth. So this is definitely thicker. Can you see it's le it's it's sitting a bit prouder. The the paint on top of the paint is there, just lingering a little bit longer. Yeah, it's in fact it doesn't disappear at all. It's still there. So I'm going to water it down very very slightly. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water, just a little squirt at a time. So all I want to do now is get that to be a similar consistency to that green because I'm quite happy with that green consistency. So it's pouring nicely. So you imagine if that's coming out your cup, if you're doing a straight pour or a ring pour, it will just flow nicely. I'm going to go slightly thinner again though. I think it's still slightly thick. Another test you can do is if you just put your stick in, does it stay there? If it's too runny, it will just fall to the side like that. But actually, if you put your stick in, will it just stay in the middle? Let's do that with the green. Yep, green, that is moving slightly, so it shows it's slightly runnier. But actually, I think with time, they're all gonna tilt slightly. Yep, so I know that that's a quite a nice, good, thick paint. Um, so that's it. Um, if you'd like me to explain anything again, if you have any questions, please just leave a question um, in underneath the description um, underneath this video um, and I will always try and get back to you. Um, but thank you for watching.